Sailing is our passion and our life, but travel is a very, very close second and we have traveled Asia extensively over the years. So when we were offered the opportunity to go and sail in Asia, we absolutely jumped at it. What is not to like? Warm waters, the scenery is amazing. The sunsets that turn the sky all different hues of pink, the ever-changing weather, the crazy thunderstorms, and not to mention the food. We absolutely love Thai food. And so this was a fantastic opportunity for us to combine two of our greatest loves. We just had to get from freezing cold London to Bangkok first. This is our Asian adventure. Seven thirty in a very very cold October morn, and uh, we, for our sins, have to fly to Bangkok this morning. Now, because Thai Air have a very strict limit on what you can take in hand luggage, um, whew, we're travelling as light as we can. So 60% of what we've got is camera gear. But what Nick was trying to say is that it's bloody cold and because we have to take so much camera gear, we are wearing the bare minimum, knowing that when we get to the other end, we will be in Bangkok and not have to wear much of the way of heavy clothing. So we're both in flip flops and shorts and it is absolutely perishing. So the sooner we get to the airport, the better. And with our camera equipment stowed in overhead lockers, we set off to head from London all the way to Bangkok. That is 6,000 miles, 10,000 kilometers, and 14 hours. degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit but it is a hundred percent humidity and the reason that I'm in a taxi on my own with no taxi driver or Therese is because uh, the taxi driver can't find where we're meant to be staying. We booked um, a guest house somewhere in the center of Bangkok so he's gone off with Therese and I'm just sitting sweating into my own underwear waiting for the taxi driver to come back with Therese. I hope Therese does come back, she hasn't been sold into some sort of slavery. Otherwise, uh, this is gonna be a difficult and different type of holiday. Theresa eventually returned and our gracious taxi driver took us to our hostel in the center of Bangkok. We managed to get our head down for a few hours and were woken to the ominous rumbling of thunder. Time to get some food before the skies opened. Bangkok is famous for its night markets and food stores, so we headed into town and watched the storeholders putting up their plastic sheeting against what would be a little bit of rain. The storeholders of Bangkok are really used to this kind of intense downpour and the pace of life didn't change one bit. We hunkered down under an umbrella and gorged ourselves on some of the best street food we had in a very, very long time.
just like that the rain stops like uh, what we love about Asia it goes from like 100% like dry to massively torrential and then back to nothing again in 10 minutes someone found a coconut One thing you have to do when you're in Thailand is take a tuk-tuk ride. Or tuk-tuk. Tuk-tuk or tuk-tuk. Uh, I think it's like potato-ish potato. potato. <laughs> and carbohydrate. Ah. <laughs> so it's pretty intense, this thing. Yeah, these are not the cheapest, but they're probably the most fun way of getting around. So. I was actually going with safest rather than The sights and smells of Chinatown were a complete assault on the senses. I wish I could show you how good this place smelled. Traditional Thai dishes like Pad Thai deep fried fish and green curry were being cooked in stalls the whole length of the Chinatown parade. And in addition to the familiar, there were of course things that, well, I'm not sure form part of our regular diet. All a really amazing experience. So Chinatown is proper back crazy. It is just a smorgasbord. That's the line that your father likes, yeah? yeah. It's a smorgasbord. It's like a massive queue here for something. Well, you know what the English are like? We love a good queue. I don't know what the hell these people are doing. I've never seen a queue and I want to join. <laughs> she did. Admit that part of me is itching to get in that queue. I don't know what they're queuing for. Well, I think it's just squid. Like it's the grilled squid man. They're just waiting for grilled squid, which I think is phenomenal. Yeah, pretty awesome. Um, and just another one of these reasons why we absolutely adore Asia. Any words, Therese? You're hungry. And with Teresa getting hungry, it was time for us to choose one of the hundreds of stalls available and sit down for a good meal and a nice cold drink. Okay, um, chain, small chain. Yeah, big. Just get a big chain. Okay, one big. So. So, well, it was not easy trying to find somewhere to eat or decide on where to eat because everywhere is like completely full up. And uh, sometimes there's like an organized queuing system and sometimes there's not. So. This is two parts chaos, one part. This is probably worse than Italy. I think three parts chaos. Three parts chaos, one part whatever. And um, so we're going to have like one dish here. And one dish. Tilt your glass, my love. This is good, not using plastics. So what we always do here is we just scoff the dish and pass no comment. Yeah. Because I've got a camera handy, you can actually provide some sort of commentary on what we're eating. So tell me some taste. If I can, because my mouth is suddenly burning. Because you gutched yourself well, again, didn't you? There's a little thing of sauce, which I just upended. You I? gutched yourself. I shoved it onto my mouth. Standard Vandaloo fashion. So I can taste a lot of ginger, some chilli. It's quite smoky with undertones of blackcurrant and gooseberry. <laughs> is this a wine or a glass noodle dish? I don't know, babe, but it's gonna be disappearing to my face in a minute. 
the next morning saw us heading through Bangkok traffic to get to the airport and take a short hour flight to the Phuket Yacht Haven, where we were going to pick up our charter for the week. So, uh, Bangkok, beautiful, amazing. Yeah. And now Phuket. Phuket to pick up our boat. Our boat. So, yeah, she finally gets to do some sailing I know, it's on nice. a catamaran that we control ourselves. Yeah, we're going to sail for the next week. That's nice. And um, there's loads of cool islands and do lots of fun things. And I'm really excited. Good. All right, well, let's get this plane on up and down <laughs> safely, and then we'll be back. Let's get this plane on. Plane on. With the Yacht Haven about 30 minutes from the airport, we did need to do one quick stop before we got on our boat, and that was to provision a week's worth of provisioning in a Thai supermarket. Uh, so yeah, we're doing our provisioning for our week away, and this supermarket is a little bit hectic. I'm just trying to find my way to Nick, who's like all the way over there. But um, yeah, it's got everything we need. Plenty of Asian food, so that's all we want. So plenty of amazing food to be had in this Thai supermarket, particularly the fresh fruit, vegetables and herbs. They smell and look amazing. Unfortunately, we did have to use the plastic bags provided in the supermarket. We didn't have our reusables with us. This was something we were not thrilled about, but hey, sometimes it can't be helped. Get enough limes there. Get a load of light vegetables so we can just have vegetable stir fries and that if we're uh, running low, like carrots and cabbage. <laughs> so provisioning done, um, the madhouse of uh, the Thai supermarket, they were all really really gracious actually and obviously re realising that we... Uh, Car park, are you in? Uh, Car park? Car park, okay. Uh, Boat. Boat. Finally, yeah. after a couple of wrong yes. turns Boat. and a long protracted discussion with our cab driver, we arrived at the marina. Now it was simply a question of getting a skipper's briefing done, unloading our food and our possessions and getting on the boat and going sailing. We were super eager to get the boat out of the marina before okay. nightfall. The skipper's briefing was pretty interesting. We were taught a lot about local tides, the water, the hazards and everything we should be looking out for on our week. It lasted about 40 minutes and I was pretty excited when it finished to get to the boat, find Therese and finally get sailing. Not that. Briefing over, we took a quick look around the marina, got ourselves a cup of coffee and then loaded our kit up, pushed it onto a dock trolley and took it to our boat. We needed a quick handover with our guide to show us the electrical systems of the boat but then we were free to go. Finally we arrived at our boat. Our steed for the week was an Island Spirit 410 Catamaran. This for us was a totally new experience. Yes, we'd been Catamaran sailing, but it was a year ago and we had Nikki and Jason Wynn as skipper to help us. Now it was just us and getting ourselves out of this marina and onto open water. Pretty daunting, pretty exciting in equal measure. So let's start some engines. Start some engines and get sailing. All right, so we are going to get out of this marina and then we are going to sail, but probably actually motor or motor sail to our anchorage that we're going to spend our first night in. So let's go. Thank you so much for watching. Please join us next week as we explore these beautiful islands. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, and a thumbs up. See you next week. Somebody take